guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is host of Jedi Council, Christian Harloff. A good morning to you, good morning to the Bazinga guy, and good morning to everybody else watching <laughs> hey. today. Guys, I hope you're having a great one. It's going to be a fun show. Hippity doo. Also here, John Schnepp. Well, good morning, Princess Leia. Oh, thank you. I love it. You. It looks great. Oh, my gosh. Um, two compliments in a row. That's wow. Right. I'm just hey, hitting it big just today. hanging out till I go to Salt Lake City this weekend. What's up, Word. Utah? Also here, Mark Ellis. I was going to go Minnie Mouse. <gasps> I was going to go Minnie oh. Mouse. Is that not cool or is that, no, is that encouraged? Okay, good. All right. All, the above. All right, let's get right into it. What do we got? Okay. Marvel has released a snippet of the Doctor Strange sneak peek that will be included on the upcoming Captain America Civil War Blu-ray. In the special feature, we get a few more details and even more footage from the movie, including better looks at Chewie Tell Edgeo Force Carl Mordo, Tilda Swinton's The Ancient One, and Mads Mikkelsen's Villain. The movie stars Benedict Cumberbatch and opens in theaters on November 4th. Christian, what do you think about the new sneak peek video for Doctor Strange? I mean, it's fairly short, but I think that it's consistent with everything that we've been seeing so far. I felt a little Star Wars stuff in there too. Mm. They say you know, the the it was basically like the Jedi that were that were seduced by the dark side. You felt that in there, and I and I think that it, it actually works for this. I like the idea. It, it's like I said, it's just consistent with everything we've seen so far. I'm getting more and more excited for this movie. Um, yeah. So, Mark, what do you think? It was short, and I was happy that it was short. Yeah. I don't need to see anything else from Doctor Strange. He already sold me before I had to watch this thing to talk about on the show. And I agree with Christian. It echoed a lot of sentiments of things and mythology that we've seen in previous movies that we happen to love, particularly when you're talking about going to the dark side. And the character that Mads Mikkelsen is playing gets more and more intriguing to me by the day. I cannot wait till this thing comes out. November? Early November? November. Yeah. Get yeah. here. It's late November. Right. Get here. I think November it's early 4th. November. Okay. Early November. Yeah. November 4th. Oh, that right. would qualify there you go. as early. early. You're right. It's almost, it's almost October. It's, it's, it's damn it's near September. Very would that close. be early? There would November? be late September, early not November. Early. Middle-ish, early-ish. Middle Earth? To Middle Earth land. Okay. I love this featurette. I, I like seeing the concept art. You're, I'm, I'm with Mark, though. I've seen enough. I just, I, I just want to see the movie now. But, I, you know, George Lucas was a big comic book fan, so that's why you're going to see elements of Star Wars in all of, like, Marvel's worlds, DC's worlds, because he would read those comics when he was in college. So, And as a little kid. I like it. All right, what's next? According to a report from Variety, Richard Linklater is set to direct the long in the works ad adaptation of the novel Last Flag Flying with Brian Cranston, Steve Carell, and Lawrence Fishburne in Talks to Star. The movie is a sequel of sorts to the 1973 film The Last Detail, starring Jack Nicholson. Last Flag Flying tells the story of former Navy petty officers, played by Nicholson and Young in the original film, coming to the aid of ex con, then portrayed by Quaid, who is trying to bring home the body of his son, who was killed killed in Iraq. A release date has not been set. Schnepp, what do you think about a last detail sequel directed by Richard Linklater? It's uh, it's interesting. It's so late in the game, though. I mean, it's it's weird. I know he's been trying to get this made for such a long time that originally he was talking to Jack Nicholson to be in the film. And um, I guess, I mean, it'll be a, like a sequel in in like theory, I guess, or like a trans-dimensional like side by side sequel in another universe because none of the same actors are playing it. So it's, it feels a little weird, but I love Richard Linklater, so I cannot wait to see this. I don't care what he does, I'll see his films. Yeah, I'm also on board with it. I want to see what Linklater does with it. And is this the first? I mean, I'm, he's writing this, I assume, also, too. But I mean, but this is the first this is the first movie that is not an original piece by him? No, I mean, he adapted, uh, you know, Scanner Darkly. Right, right, That's, right, right, you know, right, he's done right, a few different right. kinds of adaptations. Okay. I mean, he's cool with doing it. Like, in a while. Yeah, he, yeah. he likes doing his own original material but he's done a bunch of adaptations yeah so I mean this is something I mean the cast alone is enough for me to get interested in yeah. you add Link later in there it's yeah absolutely Mark I mean finally we're getting a sequel to The Last Detail <laughs> you actually haven't seen The Last Detail I saw it a long time ago but it's really good and Jack Nicholson it's 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 Nicholson going into his acting apex of his career because he's so good in that movie but yeah it's weird to hear that we're finally going to get some sort of sequel to a film that came out so long ago the only comparison you can make is that The Wizard of Oz came out in 19 39. We didn't really get a sequel to that until like a couple of years ago. Right. So, you know, I'll take it. And with that cast, anybody that wants to direct that cast, I am on board with whatever kind of film you want to make. The fact that it's going to pick up with the last detail is all the more exciting to me. So yeah, I think Richard Linklater is the right guy to do this. He clearly cares about the material that he's directing, whether he wrote it or not. And again, with Brian Cranston, Steve Crow, Lawrence Fishburne, that's going to be cool to see. All right, what's next? 
Focus Features has shifted the release date for its upcoming film, A Monster Calls, and it could signal a shift in its award strategy for the movie as well. Instead of going wide in late October, A Monster Calls will now be released in a limited 10-city run on December 23rd, before going wide in 1,500 theaters on January 6th. This release strategy proves it has the potential to be a major holiday hit, while allowing buzz to build just as Oscar nomination ballots are due. Mark, do you think Focus Features is confident about its monster calls oscar chances oh i think they are brimming with confidence and why wouldn't you if you see those trailers i saw some movie the other day and they had the trailer for the monster calls and it just takes you over man this thing has oscar bait written all over it from the acting performances to writing directing this thing could sweep a number of different categories if it's as good as the trailer looks it's got a little bit of everything it's got that underdog kind of story you want it's got somebody overcoming a bully overcoming problems in their life you also have some really cool effects you have the voice of Liam Neeson in there there's so much to get excited about with the monster calls it makes perfect sense they're positioning it for Oscar season yeah it makes me happy because I think everything we've seen we've been raving about this trailer um, we talked about it recently just on Schmoes the other night mm -hmm. how much everyone was really looking forward to this movie and um, it does you know it has elements of like never-ending story which reminds me yeah, of right. too um, with Pan's Labyrinth almost right? like that's what sure. I got from the vibe but what also what I got from the vibe of this trailer was the emotion and you can already see just in this brief trailer the performances already just from this trailer so I think it makes sense to push it to uh, and and for family films makes a ton of sense to put that at the end of December, get people a little bit more excited for it, get it qualifying, and then in January to where if it does get the awards and it does get the buzz, that's normally when movies like that, if they do get nominated, then more people go and see them in January. So right. it makes a lot of sense. I think it's I, it, it, it's very encouraging because this is a movie I've been looking forward to since the first trailer I saw, so I, I hope that it pays off. And I hope that a fantasy movie like this does, I, I hope that it's great, and I hope that it wins if it, if it deserves it. because. Sure. Sure. I want to see a fantasy movie um, just kind of go and send the biopics. And not that the biopics aren't great. And it just seems like the same type of movies get nominated and win every year. And none of the genre movies ever get nominated. So I'm hoping that this is one that, that is up there. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, all of the trailers I've seen for the film so far have choked me up emotionally because whatever the, the basis of this film is, it's definitely Oscar bait. I mean, it definitely, the story is a very emotional ride. Like you said, it's characters going through intense emotional things. I don't know. I mean, the Academy is so weird about anything that's fantasy or science fiction or horror that yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah, oh, yeah, it's always yeah. it's always been no. I mean, the only thing that really cuts through is like Lord of the Rings, and that's how many years ago now. I mean, so yeah. I'd like well, to yeah, see no, people are writing. Well, Lord of the Rings was fantasy, yeah, yeah but that was two thousand and three. Yeah. yeah, it's many years, like 12, 13 years, yeah. ago. thirteen so, years ago, guys. It's a We're rough all getting one, old. But I like I like that they're repositioning it and that they're gonna you know do an Oscar push. You know, I can't wait to see the film. You know what's great about a Monster Calls too is that as much as we're talking about how you see that trail and you can see where there's Oscar bait in there, it doesn't feel like it's hitting you over the head with the fact that, no. hey, look at all the sweeping emotion. Look at all this. You're going to want to nominate us. It right. feels like they made this movie independently of any thoughts of ever receiving a trophy. Right. And I like when you see that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for a buy or sell. Ashley's going to read some more topics in the world of movie news. Myself, Ellis, Schnepp, just going to buy or sell it. What do you got? The Warcraft movie suffered from some harsh reviews and took in only $47 million in the U.S., but fared much better overseas, ending its run with a gross of $433.5 million worldwide. And because of its global haul, the prospect of a sequel is not entirely out of the realm of possibility. During an interview with Thrillist, Jones addressed the prospect of making a sequel, saying he's definitely game given how much time he's already invested in the franchise. If there were an opportunity for us to make another film in the Warcraft universe, I really feel like we did the hard work in the first movie as far as setting the table. I would love to capitalize on three and a half years of hard work and be able to have some fun in that world now that I've done the hard work. So who knows? Maybe I'm just being a masochist. Christian, buyers sell a Warcraft sequel happening with Jones returning to direct. I'll tell you what, I'm going to buy this. And I know that there's not a lot of people who are going to say, oh, man, I can't wait to see a Warcraft 2 sequel because I can tell you right now, Perry Nemiroff somewhere is kicking rocks just hearing that this is going to be mm -hmm. made. Um, the, the, for me, a lot of people were disappointed. I think that it was a very inside baseball. I think a lot of people that were Warcraft fans dug it, understood it, and I think that it lost a lot of the core audience. But the reason I buy it is because I want. Because I am still on the Duncan Jones train. I think he's a great director. I want to see what he does 
in a sequel, does he make the same mistakes again? Or does he say, no, 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 I'm going to listen to what people are saying here. I'm going to change Warcraft 2, and I'm going to make Warcraft 2 far superior than number one, and I'm going to crush it and give people a different movie and shock the hell out of people and make this awesome. That's why I'm buying it, because I'm hoping that that's what can happen, because the lore is there. Mm -hmm. The material is there. The characters are there, and it made a lot of money overseas, and it can, and it, it's, it's enough to justify doing another one. I just hope that he... Duncan Jones, that is, is able to say, all right, here are the things that I need to do differently than the first one, and they change it up and make more of a mass audience kind of enjoy it and get a couple better actors in there. But how are you feeling? I am slightly going to sell this simply because I love Duncan Jones as a director and as a storyteller, so I don't want to see him go back to Warcraft yeah. again necessarily because he did do all that work setting the table. I want to see Duncan Jones aim his sights on a different style project, maybe another fantasy film, but just not Warcraft. And that's not to say I wouldn't be up for a Warcraft sequel because I think I would be. I don't care how much money it made in the United States. I, it, it might not come out in English again. It might, it might be a different language and then give us subtitles because not a lot of people here wanted to see that picture. But I just don't want to see Duncan Jones put so much time and effort into another Warcraft movie to get diminishing returns here in the States. I'd rather see him aim his sights on something a little more original, what he succeeded on in the past. Yeah, I'm going to sell this, too. I'm not selling Duncan Jones. I think he's an incredibly talented director. I just watched Moon again two nights ago because he's working on pre-production on a new science fiction film called Mute, which takes place in the same world that Moon does. So I'm very excited to see that film. I'm glad he's making that film next. And I want to see him do other new films. I don't want to see him return to Warcraft. He already did Warcraft. I don't think it was a good film. He did his best. He did, you know, he put the hard work in. If anything, he should be a producer on it. Let somebody else direct it. That's a ton of work directing a giant beast like Warcraft. I want to see his creative abilities on other smaller films. That's where he shines. That's a great call because doesn't it feel like if I'm watching Warcraft and now my expectations are lowered from seeing the first one, which I actually enjoyed watching, but it wasn't a great film. Right. So I don't necessarily need a great director to come in and do another one. You need somebody who obviously has the capability to do a big, large scale movie, but I don't know that Duncan Jones is the guy that I want. I agree with Schnepp. Make him a producer on it, make him a consultant, but you don't necessarily need him behind the camera because I'd rather see him do more original stuff. Like, the, like going back to the moon universe. That'd be awesome. All right, what's next? The debut trailer for James Franco's adaptation of the John Steinbeck novel In Dubious Battle has finally been released. Scripted by Matt Rager, the film revolves around an apple picker strike in 1930s California. Paper Town star Nat Wolf leads the pick alongside Robert Duvall, Vincent D'Onofrio, Selena Gomez, Ed Harris, Brian Cranston, Sam Shepard, Danny McBride, Zach Braff, and Franco himself. The movie has yet to receive a release date. Schnett Byers saw the first trailer for James Franco's In Dubious Battle. Well, we were just talking about A Monster Calls and how it wasn't screaming out like uh, Oscar bait <laughs> yeah. in its trailer or its promotional devices. And that's what this film is screaming. It's like every single person. Look, every single person in this film is an actor or actress that I really like. So it's like, but you know, they're Oscar nominee, Emmy nominee. This guy won an Oscar. Here's another Oscar nominee. This is literally, there's half the trailer is just showing a shot of some dude looking around and then you have their name with Oscar nominee under it. But besides that, I like the context of it. This definitely, this brings me way back to John Sayles' Mate Wan. So look that up. Woo. This has that flavor to it though, which I kind of like. I like these kind of a uh, smaller, uh, you know, rise against the machine kind of film. So I, I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna buy the trailer, even though the trailer itself isn't very well constructed and is very like, look at all the people we got. You know, it's like, look, we already know who they are. You don't have to be like, and this and here's another Oscar nominee. It's like, look, we get it. You got the chunkier Vincent D'Onofrio at the same time when he was shooting that other movie, uh, Rings. He's a little thicker. We get it. It's, <laughs> the it's, chunkier. Yeah, the we chunkier. We need someone to feed Vincent. Yeah. We want a chunky Vincent. Yeah, D'Onofrio. we got the, the thickened <laughs> Vincent in this one. All right. So anyway, I'm. I'm you know, yeah, I'm going to buy the, the trailer and I, that I want to see it. That's what I got to say. Well, I'm similar, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to buy the movie, but I'm selling the trailer. Yeah, which is yeah. essentially the same thing you're doing. Um, I think that the trailer is pretty much it's 
by the numbers. Hey, we're going for some awards. <laughs> hey, look at this actor. Look at this totally. one. Hey, James Franco reads books. Yeah. You know, it's like that's pretty much that's pretty much what it is. Every movie he does, it's like I would love to have that guy doing the trailer review. It's like I would love from that. everybody else who was yeah. trying to get an Oscar. Look at this guy want a thing. This guy reads and does crazy stuff. He was even in a soap opera. This guy now, wants some stuff on TV. Now he's putting in the guy from Breaking Bad and Daredevil <laughs> in a period Steinbeck movie. But that's wait, right. there's more. We also have. <laughs> This and if you order right now, we right. have this actor. Over here, we and got you, thick Vincent D'Onofrio. You like pop stars? We got that girl. Hey. Um, so anyway, there's, it, the movie itself uh, is something that I think I could because of the material alone. Obviously, it's great material. It, it, it's I want to see. Um, what he does with it as a director, he was able to. He's a good producer, also. He got a lot of people in there that he knows. Probably did that Why Him movie with Brian Cranston. I said, hey, you want to shoot a little <laughs> uh, He's a charming guy. Probably got a lot of people to do, and he's been doing a lot of stuff. You, the guy, he's he is a worker. He's a renaissance James Franco man. Franco is a worker, yeah. and he's a hard worker. I mean, he gets things done. I don't. I think there's eight of him. Like, people <laughs> talk right. about The Rock. How The Rock does a lot of stuff. Franco does just as much. You just don't know about it because they're not as high profile. We were talking about how many yeah. movies he's directed, like 15 or something. Yeah, he's got the ape. He started out, he's a really, uh, he's a multi hyphen and he's super talented. So it's like, it's fun to see him attack certain things. Yeah. He's bringing his all to it. So, uh, you know, the movie itself, I, I'm very interested to see. The trailer, just like you were saying, it's just very kind of, please give us awards. Uh, Chunky Ellis is going to sell this, man. <laughs> I prefer a creamy Vincent D'Onofrio, and this felt like a TV movie to me. I felt like I was watching something with a bunch of famous actors that are getting a paycheck because as much as I love Robert Duvall and Ed Harris they it's not like every move they've done is because of the art sometimes you just go and you show up to set for a few weeks and you get a paycheck nothing in this trailer convinced me that it's anything more than that right. so while it could be a great film and if you just if you gave me all those actors you said here's the premise James Franco's directing it, I could be like yeah let's go see this movie but based on that trailer there's nothing in here that makes me think it's going to be an Oscar caliber film or even something that I would need to go see in theaters it screamed on demand to me i hope i'm more impressed with another trailer all right what's next Saban Films has released the latest trailer for Rob Zombie's upcoming freak show horror movie, 31. The movie stars Sherry Moon Zombie, Malcolm McDowell, Jeff Daniel Phillips, and Meg Foster. The movie tells the story of five carnival workers who are kidnapped the night before Halloween and held hostage in a large compound and forced to play a twisted game of life or death called 31. Zombie wrote and directed the film, which will have an October 21st release. Mark Byersell, the new trailer for Rob Zombie's 31. It's nice that carnies are no longer torturing people. They're actually the ones getting tortured, getting a little bit of your comeuppance, you, you creepy bastards. Um, I am going to buy this trailer, despite the fact that I personally have no desire to see this movie. It looks like the kind of torture porn that I'm not into, even though I'm a huge fan of horror films. Unlike Ashley, I'm not a huge fan of like the Saw-style movies. Well, this it's, is what that is. I, I, I know. So I personally don't want to see it, but mm -hmm. the trailer is selling this to a demographic, and I think that people who appreciate those kind of movies are going to respond to this trailer. Rob Zombie is a very talented guy. Some of his movies have not paid off in the past as well as his music has, but I think that if this is what you're going for, 31 is going to please you, especially with that release date of October 21st. Chunky Ellis doesn't want to see it, but I'll buy the trailer. <laughs> I don't know if I could sell anything more than this trailer. I hated this trailer, and I don't think it's going to appease to everyone. I just, there's something about this, I mean, just maybe to Rob Zombie and his friends. Um, I, there's, there's nothing about this thing. I, I turned it off in the last 15 seconds because I got it. I understood exactly what I was seeing from it. Creepy images, jump scare, blood, creepy guy. <laughs> Creep, 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 creep. I'm just, it's, what, what's the story? I have no idea what this movie is. I, and I, I, there's nothing that I want to see about this movie. I, I think that one of the main things with movies like this is that you want to, tr you look at something like Don't, don't uh, Breathe, right? Um, don't Breathe? Is mm -hmm. right? Don't Breathe. Yep. So that movie to me is something I really want to see. Conjuring 1, Conjuring 2. Myself, Dennis, who are not horror fans, I think that for, I mean, I just think you should try to get everyone in there. You should try to make trailers look to be like, oh, well, that's interesting. That's, I, know, I know that Kevin Smith does something like Yoga Hosers where it's appeasing just a particular audience, and that could be what Rob Zombie's doing also. But I think Kevin Smith has earned it. I don't, I don't think Rob Zombie yet as a director has earned that. Um, so I don't know. I just, I watching this trailer, I just wanted to, sh I, I couldn't shut it off fast. But don't you appreciate the fact that they did cut the trailer and they didn't hold anything back, that it's not trying to get in a broad horror fan? Because I love horror movies. I do not want to see it? this What's the story? 
story? Movie. What's the well, movie? The, the, you got your five carnies and they got to play like a saw game to get out alive. Yeah, yeah. the premise sounds really good, like reading the story right, behind but it. But I trailer. didn't get that from the right. trailer. Although right. I'm really intrigued because I love these kinds of movies. It reminds me of like Saw, American Horror Story. But I didn't get that that premise in there. But I'm still gonna go. Well, see it looked it. like <laughs> other carnies had kidnapped You're not some. Gonna see it. I'm some definitely rookie gonna carnies. go see it. Like you know? I, I some love some creepier the story clown this. style carnies. Some kidnapped yeah. some other carnies. Some guys that have been working yeah. the carnival circuit for years. They they kidnapped like the five <clears> new <throat> kids who just started working yeah. at Tilt the World that summer. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Well, this like reminds that. me very much of the X Men's character Arcade, who would bring the X Men into a thing called Murder <laughs> World, and then <laughs> so this is like literally exactly what this is. Only it's called Thirty One. Um, this this trailer, I mean, I like Rob Zombie's film, so I'm gonna buy this trailer because this has his creepy tonality, his weirdo, like dirty clowns with skin masks and all the other messed up, you know, stuff that's in every one of his other films and the stuff that he draws from from the '70s exploitation gore fests and things like that that I love. So everything about this trailer, yeah, it's definitely not for like 95 percent of the rest of the public movie going audience or anyone else for that matter but that five percent of people are into this kind of film i already know it's like it's a limited small it's a small story it's going to be like the most dangerous game basically it's like can you survive long enough through this strange world of freaky clown masks and other weird stuff you know i'm a bunny blood everything so <laughs> i'm gonna see this film you sold me on it i'm buying the trailer all right uh <laughs> let's move on over to wendy lee who's been looking at the chat room. Wendy, what are they saying? Well, they're talking about Doctor Strange and the sneak peek. Uh, the short feature definitely got the chat hyped for the movie and for the most part very excited for the film. Taco Pie says, uh, Sell, this movie looks terrible. And Jimbo says, The feature was underwhelming. It showed nothing new and nothing we don't know already. And moving on to the Warcraft sequel, the majority of the chat sells this, although I'm seeing some comments saying Duncan Jones can uh, hopefully take the mistakes from the first film and make the sequel better. Jimbo, again, says tentative by Warcraft had good elements, but the story took a wrong turn and fell off a cliff. Need a better story. And Tyler Morton says uh, Duncan Jones should do something else. All right. Thank you, Wendy. And thank you for you guys for chiming in. Now it's time for AMC Rewind, brought to you by our friends over at AMC Theaters. Ashley Mova is going to tell us about the movies that opened 10 and 20 years ago. Ashley, what opened up 10 and 20 years ago? 10 years ago, there was Crank, Idiocracy, and The Wicker Man. And then 20 years ago, there was Bulletproof and Bogus. The, not the bees. Not the bees. <laughs> the Wicker Man, one of the best unintentional comedies of all time. I Neil remember, Butte is still trying to live that down. Listen, man. When I remember our buddy Ethan Irwin and mm -hmm. I watched some scenes from that movie, and I had no idea that they had even done a remake. Right. And then they showed scenes, and I'm telling you, tears. Was streaming. it him running in the, with a bear it's, outfit, punching women? Absolutely. I mean, it's out of its, its mind it's, crazy. It is an insane... If you have never seen The Wicker Man, um, the remake, just look for the best scenes on YouTube. There's yeah. tons of them. You will laugh uncontrollably. It's and you'll hysterical. question your sanity. You're it, like, what the hell am, am I watching? watching? And that it's was true. the point in time when it was like Nicolas Cage. It's like, okay, he's been a little crazy the last couple of years, yeah. right? I think maybe he needs a comeback pitch. Like, we had no idea that he was just going to get crazier and crazier and crazier. Right. I'm so upset I didn't see that movie in the theater. Um, <laughs> and then Crank, I can't believe it was 10 years old. I remember when that came out. Oh, I so, love that movie. Yes. Yeah, so I love Crank 2 even more, okay. but I love both of them. I, I want those guys, Neville Dean and Taylor, to do Crank 3. I think you know they owe it to us to make the craziest trilogy. I mean, you got two of them already. You know, what are they going to do to stay them next to keep them alive? That's the one that stands out to you. Uh, the one that stands out to me is Crank, and the most the one that stands out to me most is Idiocracy. Because not only do we live in Idiocracy right now, it's a horrible like it was like when it came out, we were all like, oh my god, you know, this is there's no way our, we're going to get this. Our culture is going to get this stupid, and now here we are. <laughs> I mean, literally, do I do I have to say Trump? I don't care if you don't like it. Uh, we live in this really horrible, <laughs> stupid society. So, Idiocracy rules. Ellis. Bunch of people watching us talk movies on YouTube. Come on, we're in an idiocracy. It's idiocracy. Idiocracy. It, it, I'm, I'm surprised that that movie didn't have the cult following that Office Space did. Because right. it's also Mike Judge. It's got that same style, sense of humor. It's very sarcastic in a in sometimes a dark way, but it also just has a lot of laughs in there. Uh, the one that stands out to me is Bulletproof, and I'll tell you why. I remember renting that movie like literally five times and just waiting for it to be funny. Because yeah. it's got Damon Wayans and Adam right. Sandler in it, both 
both arguably at their prime. And it's like, okay, this is going to be good, right? And it just, it, 30 minutes go by and I'm asleep. I never made it through Bulletproof. It never got good for me. Wow. All right. Well, that's everything from AMC Rewind. Again, thank you, thank you to our friends over at AMC Theaters. All right. Before we go to Mailbag, I mentioned yesterday that you guys can have a chance to win a bunch of prizes, whether they Blu-ray, digital codes. People have been asking whether or not um, you have to be a U.S. resident to do it. No, you don't, because if you win the bracket for the Ultimate Schmodown Tournament, which begins on Friday with Mark Riley going up against Dewberry. If you submit to skdown2016 at gmail.com and submit your bracket before Friday at uh, 12 p.m. PST, you have a chance to win a whole bunch of prizes. You have to get the perfect bracket. You have to put your name in. You have to put your address in. You can only submit once. Myself, uh, John Campia, Mark Riley, and Clark Wolf all did a very special breakdown video that's up on the channel right now. So if you haven't seen all the Schmodowns, you're like, oh, I still want to participate. We give you a little bit of a breakdown of past matches, who we think are the favorites in the match, and it's a lot of fun. So go check it out, leave a comment, and we will see this tournament start on Friday. All right, let's get to Mailbag. Uh, there's a couple, well, one question today. Ashley, what do we got? Nelson writes, hey, Collider crew, I was talking to my friends about Inception because they loved it so much, and I remember really not liking it. I love the plot and Leo's storyline, but I remember not liking the execution of the action, and I remember being really, really bored during most action sequences. Seeing as it has been six years, and after discussing the film with them, I realized there's a lot I don't remember it about it that well. I decided I'm going to rewatch it because I fear I might have the wrong opinion about it. So my question is, what movie do you feel slash felt that uh, needed to you needed to rewatch because your opinion was so opposite of everyone else's that you think you missed something. Greetings from Portugal. Ellis, let's start with you. Why are you doing this to me, man? Why? You did this in the pre-production <laughs> meeting. You said you you basically I told intonated. You, I gave you throw me under the bus. I, I didn't. No, I because gave because you the movie, because said, I'll <laughs> catch crap in the office for the rest of the day for not bringing this up. And it's not the movie that I was going to take, but Christian suggested that I talk about <laughs> After Earth. <laughs> Why? The movie with Will Smith, who basically just hangs out in a crashed spaceship, and then he coaches his idiot kid through a bunch of challenges he has to survive on Earth, where Earth is now reverted back to being like kind of caveman days. There's mm -hmm. a lot of scary beasts out there. I liked After Earth. I didn't think it was a great movie, but I liked it. Doesn't mean that I approve of Jaden Smith. Doesn't mean that I follow the dope on Twitter. No, we have to go but back it means and watch it. Watching so. the movie, I would be happy to watch After Earth again because I think I'd have about the same opinion on it. The movies that scare me are one Sucker Punch. I really like Sucker Punch when it came out. I liked what Zack Snyder's vision was. It did feel like a big music video, but I got engaged in the story as well. A lot of cool action in there. The one that scares me the most is Mirror Mirror. Oh, yeah. Because I was I, that movie charmed my pants off. All the, the, the little guys running around singing in Snow White there. And uh, it was, a, you know, it, it was a it was a good fantasy adventure. I'm just not sure I'm going to love it as much as I did the it's first time. Awful. I saw Wait, wasn't that it's, have you seen awful. it again? I, yeah, it's awful. We tried to my wife was like, she's like, wait, Ellis like this. Let's, let me try it. <laughs> And my wife oh. wanted to turn it off, and she loves those. Wasn't movies. it directed by Tar Sem? Yeah. yeah, I love saying that name. We liked from uh, the, uh, the the fall, fall. Yeah, yeah. Great. the it's cell. The yeah. 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 Um, uh, for me, I think that it it was uh, Interstellar, because I didn't like I didn't like Interstellar when I saw it the first time, and every, and I talked to a bunch of people that were like, "Oh man, this, there's so many great things about it." Because I'm a Nolan fan, I was like, ah, I, don't, "I don't know." And I went back and I watched it the second time, and I was really kind of blown away by it the second time. First time, I don't know if it was in the theater that I was in, or I was expecting something else. My expectations were headed in a different direction. But when I focused in the second time and really kind of understood what was coming, hmm. I found myself appreciating that movie a lot more. You uh, uh, you agree then Hathaway's decision in that movie? <laughs> You know, there's, there's no spoilers here, right. but uh, she makes a decision that seems yeah. a little selfish in yeah. retrospect. Right. Anyway. Uh, maybe, you know, and the other one that I think that I would maybe go back and watch again because I haven't watched it. And this is only because I talked to you and Riley and you guys love this movie so much. I think you're on the opposite. You're on my page is Godzilla. Mm. Um, oh, the dude. recent one. I know you guys love yeah. Godzilla. I just I liked the very the first 10 minutes and I liked the last 20. Everything else in between I remember just thinking was awful. Yeah. So maybe I'll go back and watch that stink box again. I'm never going to watch that stink box yeah, again. Yeah. I can't wait for the Godzilla 2 or Godzilla versus King Kong, but I'm the, I'm going to see the new version of Godzilla that's coming out like next next week, the actual Toho brand new Godzilla. Right, right. That looks mm. badass. Watch the trailer. I'm going to name Inherent Vice. That's a film that I saw Ooh. and I did not like, but a lot of p critics said it was good. A lot of people liked it. And it's a, you know, it's a pinch-in film. It's, yeah. it's Anderson. I so I was one, like, yeah. 
I got to give it another shot. That's one of those films where I'm like, I want wanted to like it, did not like it. I'm gonna give it another shot. That's one of the films for me. Did, okay, but you, you haven't have, gone back and watched it. Have since. not yet. Okay. Just you gotta report mm-hmm. back to us. I, yeah, I, I, I can't. I, I couldn't. Can't get it was through. hard for me to finish. Yeah. yeah. All right. I will, I will report. It's, back. Yeah, no Godzilla. Do. Yeah. All no, right. it's not. Let's get to the twits. Um, so they have been submitting some live questions, and we are going to get to It's what plants them. crave. <laughs> yep. Right, guys? Yeah. It's an idiocracy quote. Get on. I can't. Right. Okay. Alan Payne writes, do you think George Lucas will direct again ever? Thanks. No. I don't. I, I mean, think if he does, it's never, something we're never going to see. Remember, he's been promising this for years, and I want him to do it. His weird green screen, like, in his garage, like, with some girl dancing, like, ballet, bizarro experimental films. He's been saying, I, I just want to get you do a George Lucas. Well, what I said, actually, yeah. is the fact that I'm going <laughs> to just I, I, do I it. I want to just never, do experimental you know, films. You're just never going to see them. Yeah, you're never going to see them. He's like, maybe, you know, he's like, that's what I want him to do. I, I love I could have I loved his movies. 20, I love American Graffiti. I think he's them. a great filmmaker outside of Star Wars. So I want to see other things. THX 1138, let's go. I, I don't know. I think there's an outside shot that he does. No just, chance. Just get an idea for a smaller independent movie going back to like a THX 1138 yeah. or even American Absolutely Graffiti. Not. Or maybe George Lucas kidnaps five carnies and locks them in his basement and makes them right. escape. Murder no world. My, I don't know. my real name is Alan Smithy. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. What's next? Okay. Uh-oh. Tony Morrow asks. Yo, what Tony is, Morrow in the house. What is Affleck's next directorial film besides Batman? And could it finally get him a best director nod? And I asked this because I just saw The Town for the first time. And it's I amazing. loved yeah. it. Yes. Gone, have you seen Gone Baby Gone? No, I haven't. Oh, that's the one you got to see. The director's cut of The Town is even better. That's good. It's it's fantastic. Fantastic. Actually, treat yourself. See Gone Baby treat Gone. Treat yourself. Right. Um, but he actually is doing another movie for Fox. They just announced I forgot the name of it. But he's got another movie coming out. And I think it's the first movie he's directing that is not a Warner Brothers movie. Now, it's like Live By Night. Is that what that is? Oh, yeah. that's it. And then he's also got the one accoutant. that he's directing called Witness for the Prosecution, Look at that. Right. which uh, comes out in 2018. All right. Did he direct the accountant? Uh, he, did he did not direct oh, the accountant. O'Connor. Okay. And it's pronounced the accountant. No, that's Josh McCoogie. He's the accountant. <laughs> I'll never let him live it down. Yeah. If you forgot the end there, oh. Is that what he said, the accountant? Well, and I did his TV, when I did the Josh McCuga show, yeah. he, had, he had written down all these superhero names, but he wrote, uh, he forgot to add the end. So I was like, the accountant. Oh, and I just, that's, trust can't. me, if Josh McCuga's your accountant, you got big problems. <laughs> uh, well, he did get the rogue one right. All right, what's next? Jackson White writes, how do you think indie films can become recognized? Uh, well, use the interwebs to your advantage. I don't know. I think, uh, you know, the, the biggest challenge an independent film faces with a, a large studio <laughs> film is P&A, print and advertising, and having a budget to get the word out. Well, in the world of the Internet, you have that chance to spread the word as best you can through all of the social media and all of your friends. So that's the way independent film will continue to survive. Streaming. Streaming is yes. the way. I mean, that's. I mean, look at, for example, a movie that came out and was gone within a week that people liked. Uh, JTE and Roca, especially, was Bloodfather, uh, which is a smaller movie. Mm. And and we know one of the main reasons it didn't do well is because Mel Gibson can't really get people in theaters anymore. He just. I mean, even with his even with um, the, the his Hacksaw Ridge coming out, they don't even put his name on it. They put right. the, the director of Braveheart. So it's hard for him to get people in there. But from what you, what I've heard from the film is that it's great. It's already available on iTunes. It's already available on Amazon. You, this is where you can find these movies so much easier now. Because I was like, oh, wait a minute. I want to see that. Great. And I'm, so I'm going to watch it this weekend. Yeah, on demand is the same way. Like Sing Street. I, I really wanted to see Sing Street. Then I turned my TV. I'm like, oh, sweet. I can just sit here right now and watch it. Like If you make it easier for us to find the movie. And I know that sometimes that's out of the independent filmmaker's hands. That falls under distribution. But if that can be what your focus Focus is, is to make sure that the masses can see the film a variety of different methods as easily as possible because getting a theatrical lease and getting your movie in 3,000 theaters opening weekend isn't feasible for a lot of independent films so find a different way to get to our eyeballs because a lot of times it does pay off that's exactly how I saw Sing Street too I tried seeing it in the theater I was like oh it just left last mm-hmm. week I was like come on and right. then it just showed up literally it's like oh let's rent it so yep. we, that's how we enjoyed it all right three more okay Food Mansing writes. Food Mansing! Food Mansing! Food Mansing! All right. Um, what is the one movie that you would show aliens to best represent humanity? Dude, <clears throat> what a great uh, question. Idiocracy. I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> I knew it. Camacho. Um, oh, man. Dumb and dumb right now. Um, I don't. I would one. show them the right stuff. I would show them. Um, all of the astronaut movies. Like, look how much we've been trying to meet you right. guys and get off this planet. Close Encounter? 
I would show him Close Encounters. It's a great yeah. call. Uh, uh, you don't want to offend the aliens, okay? Well, you don't, that's why you don't show him Star Wars. You don't want to think, oh, this is our idea of what you guys are. Right. You don't want to show him Independence Day. What about like, Contact? This is a risk. You, you do not Sagan's show them contact. an alien movie. No, you do no. not show them a movie Son of an alien. You do, boyhood. You do not show Richard, them a Richard, Richard movie. Linklater's Boyhood. Watch us grow over time. No. I am going to go Civil with, War. Um, the <laughs> Civil War wouldn't be bad. Suicide actually. Squad. I would say Wizard of Oz because the Wizard of oh. Oz shows everything that is great and hopeful about humanity, how we have dreams, we have goals. Clicking your heels to go to world. another planet. We can also come back home and realize that we have loved ones that care about us. So I would say the Wizard of Oz is what we would show aliens. And if not that, you guessed it, double impact. Uh, somebody beat us. Rocky Four. Absolutely. Great <laughs> choice. All right. What's next? <laughs> Joshua Howell writes, all female reboots. Is this becoming a fake equality marketing tool or do studios truly support these women? I think it's both. I, I do. I think that they're, I don't think that they would do it if they didn't support the women. I think that they, they have to support the women to do it. But I also think that there's a time right now that they, it's, it's a thing to do. So they're going to try to do it. And I think sometimes it works and I think sometimes it doesn't. Um, and I, and I've been saying it and I'll say it again and repeat myself. I think that the oceans, uh, continuation is a good idea. Yeah. I know I'm in the minority for it. But, no, I think it's good. But I think it's a good idea because it's a continuation. I think that Sandra Bullock has proven she can do movies like this. I think that if you continue it with the Danny Ocean storyline, he doesn't have to be in it a lot. He can make a cameo, help her out, and then get the hell out of there. That's fine with me. Um, but it just depends on how they do it. Don't don't cheapen it by just making it a gimmick. They're going to do it because it's they want. It, it's going to get the word out. People are going to be talking about it because when you talk about this Oceans thing, you're talking right. about it's an all-female cast. And it happens to work, but sometimes if you, if you can smell it when it's just the marketing right. tool, expendables. Yeah, like, right, yeah. right, right. It's just yeah. a tool. So how do you feel about yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I think that like a lot of the offices that you guys work in or the school you go to, that the movie making industry is filled with good people and with assholes. And so if a good person is like, oh, I think that we should reboot Ghostbusters, say with an all female cast, which I think was the right way to go with it, you're going to have people watch that and see that it got all this attention and and no, maybe you know what, maybe we should do this with this, not because we care about equality just because we care about making a buck and getting our name in the paper so it goes both ways it's up to us as the consumer to be able to sniff out which ones are just trying to get a quick buck and which ones actually deserve to have uh female leads in the movies yeah i think like you said the oceans one is it's going to be a fun turn a fun twist i'm i'm all for that and i and i was all for the ghostbusters the all-female ghostbusters expendables not so much all right, last one. I think it's time, though, as we progress kind of as a society, like at first it'll just feel gimmicky, but it'll just happen so frequently right. that we'll just become used to it. Right now we're noticing it because we're just progressing as a society. We're not used to seeing all these females, you know, in these lead roles basically but i think we'll just get used that's to it the ultimate time. goal too but it's also like you can't you can't keep rebooting things that have already yeah. happened that's that had yeah. guys like if you have you know gina davis and susan sarandon are the new blues brothers it's right. like well why can't they just have an adventure <laughs> yeah. by themselves like like thelma and louise you watch that and, and i'm not thinking in my head like mm. oh they got to put two broads in this action movie. it's a great film and it's not because it's two females it's just because it's a great film same thing with the league of their own same thing yeah. with bridesmaids so you're not yeah. remaking anything do original content with female leads that's the right way to go. But even so, like even if you're going to do, I still think that again, using the example of, of oceans, I think that the difference is something with Ghostbusters. For me, is that I think that you put too much pressure on those women by a making the whole cast uh, women, but the main the main thing I think the main pressure for them came on uh, trying to reboot this nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Uh, that everybody loves so much. I think that they should have done the same thing they're doing with Oceans. If they would have done that, even if they had the four women, if it would have just been the four women, but they would have continued on and mm -hmm. used Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd in better ways than they did because they were wasted yeah, in that wasted. movie. Um, I think that you would have taken a lot of pressure off them. You would have taken a lot of pressure off Paul Feig. Uh, I just think it was a bad choice. And the way they marketed it originally was that as if it was a retelling with the music and everything too, 30 years later. Yeah. It's like, no, oh, you just, you're teasing people and then giving them the middle finger afterwards. I, I, I agree that Ghostbusters had a lot of pressure because of the previous film franchise in there, but I've seen nothing and heard anything. We haven't seen a trailer for Ocean's 8 yet. That sounds to me still like it's too early to tell whether that's like a studio saying, oh, let's just put a lot of women in this role and see if it makes money or if they actually care about the material and it makes sense to have an all-female team go break into something that happens to have one of them related to George Clooney's character. All right, what's last? Okay. <laughs> Alan Reed writes, if American Pie gets a remake, who would you want to see play Stifler? 
Oh, that's what are you, a, I, what are you giggling about over there. I, I would, mean, it's just such a funny question to end on. But uh, Dave Franco. Ah, that's a good call. Yeah. A little older now, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can, can we not just get Sean William Scott? He still looks pretty young. Yeah. He's, no, yeah, he, he is does. the iconic yeah. Adam. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Adam, Adam Devine, Devine, Devine would be a great stiffler. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I love that. What about Camacho? Who from Idiocracy? Oh. All right. It's a good movie, Schnapp. It's a good way it's to really end the show. Movie. All right, hey. so that's the end of the show for today. I would like to thank everybody. First, Miss Wendy Lee, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. Next to me, Mr. John Schnapp, where can they find you? It's what plants crave, electrolytes. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> with uh, Bloody Bunnies. Just at John Schnepp. And in Utah this weekend at Salt Lake City, come on down and join the Sweat Fest. <laughs> I love the Sweat Fest. All right, you guys also make sure you catch this character over here, Mark Ellis. Where can they find you? Yeah, I'll be doing my uh, sometimes cameo on Jedi Council with Christian this week and then the movie trivia showdown this Friday. Sunday, I'll be at the Comedy Store in Hollywood. You guys can find me on Twitter at Mark Ellis Live. The tournament starts on Friday, Riley versus Dewberry. Make sure that you submit those brackets for a chance to win the prize. And also, myself and Mark Ellis, we're doing a full Q&A on Schmoes. Two hours Q&A hosted by Miri Jedek. And make sure that you go on over to our channel and leave a question over there so we can get to your questions. Thank you guys so much. Christian Arlov at Twitter and Instagram. And we'll catch you rude. right over here. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, how freaking rude. Tweet me. I was about to do how it. How rude Christian Harloff is. So Sorry. Not Ashley Mova. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, guys. I like your haircut. Do the shoulder shake. Do the shoulder Happy shake. Happy Wednesday. Have a, have a, have a, have a. See, well, that's what you get. Plants, All right. clay, See you tomorrow. Hey, guys, Give if you like, like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.